There we go. Hi, this is Sharon with Positively Provost, and I own It's Time Promotions. Today we get to meet with Barry Livingston. Hi, Barry. Hi. <laughs> Barry is, um, he owns Provost Glass and Door, but, and he also took over your parent, I don't know how long ago that was, of uh, Bernie's over It would be a, a year ago in January, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you have that as well now. But Barry is also, you're also a part of, like, I think you're a huge asset to our community in many, many ways, but two of the ones, you're um, a trustee of the school division, right? Yep. And yep. also your past president of the Chamber of Commerce and still a, a, a member of the Chamber, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've been really active in our community, so we really thank you for that. And I'm honored because I've got to work with you for very many years. So <laughs> I, I really appreciate that too. So Barry, if it's okay, I'm going to get you to introduce yourself uh, and just explain to everybody a little bit about what you do. Sure. Well, thank you very much for, for asking me to come on here and have me on. Um, so we, uh, we've, Back in 2005, my wife, Michelle, and I bought um, my parents' business, Provost Glass and Door. And um, being growing up in this community um, since 1984, we've lived here as a family. And um, really, we, this was home. So I was excited to get into business in, in Provost and, um, and start a family. And, and, and then mom and dad um, kept the overhead door side of our business and it was Bernie's overhead door and then a year ago in January we uh, took over that part of the comp uh, their company and so now the overhead doors uh, are all under the same provost glass and door umbrella and yeah I don't know what else uh, I can really share as far as well, that I think we'll cover some of the questions like I'm full of questions like you guys do a lot of custom work and I think we'll go over some of that as we go through some of the questions maybe sure yeah right I think we'll touch base on that like I like for example your shut your custom showers I think that's brilliant I don't know if people do that know about that stuff but you guys have really tapped into a lot of the a niche market right and it's not just around Provost you guys are all around Alberta yeah. in fact yeah we've tried to get into more of a niche market there yep. yeah so I think that's exciting and I think other people would love to hear about that as well sure. um so let's we'll start off with the first question and if for some reason one of these questions don't touch base and then we'll go back and talk about it a little bit okay sure okay so the first question is oh my that's popping up now but I know it off by heart how has the COVID-19 uh affected your business Barry well we uh for the last couple of weeks, we've noticed we've been quite busy, uh, but for for more than one reason, we've we have a couple staff members that are uh, in isolation, and so that was made us short uh, staff. Mm -hmm. um, but also, we we had some urgency to get some jobs wrapped up, that uh, just in case you know things they're changing by the hour really, and so we we wanted to to make sure we got those projects wrapped up and also to get product um, is, is getting more difficult, especially um, some polycarbonates and uh, Lexans and ple uh, plexiglass, stuff like that for sneeze guards. We, uh, there were some challenges there getting that product and, and we had some of that work to do. So then, so we had a little bit of urgency in those areas. Um, but I do see that it's going to really um, taper off in the next few weeks and we're going to start to see things slow down. Um, just it, it, we'll always have um, some service work to do but when doors are used less they need less work right. and that's really the basis of our our company is service and so that will be affected in the long run and, and we'll see, start to see it slow down for sure. Yeah like even us last week, if you asked us, it says, oh no, we're going, like we're flat out putting in, you know, 10 hour days, go, go, go. And then this week hits while we're caught up, right? Like it's yeah, like, okay, exactly. now what? So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I always think, you know, it's better than, I, I kind of appreciate companies not, you know, I'd rather than not order than me holding receivables, right? right. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like it's, uh, you, you can't be sitting on receivables either, right? So. No, yeah. that's right. And, um, and it's it's what? a struggle to to spend within your means when you don't know what your means are going to be in the next while. So it's no. everybody's going to draw hold back. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Oh, I guess also the oil price. How's the oil price affected you, Barry? Well, we we don't do uh, like the majority of our work isn't for um, oil related necessarily uh, directly related businesses. But as you know, it all trickles down the same pipe. 
And if there's less revenue in the oil community, there's going to be less revenue for everybody. And that's, that's just uh, the way it is in, in, in our area. And I think we'll, it'll definitely start affecting us um, down the road if that oil price doesn't correct at some point. Yeah, it's uh, same with us. Like we're not oil company, but we have so many customers in the oil exactly. field, right? So yeah, yeah, it's a huge ricochet in our area. For sure. What strategies have you implemented to get you and your company through? Have you started doing anything knowing that the that work is going to get slower? Well, we we are pretty diverse, and so we we a lot of our our work is is service and repairs. And it's that part of it, like I said before, is going to, it's really what's going to hold us if, if anything, because stuff always needs to be fixed, but the less it's used, the less it needs to be repaired. And so that, that will uh, slow down for us. Um, some of our work is, um, it's probably not a lot of people know that we, we do do some custom uh, work, whether it's wood doors, um, custom enclosed showers, uh, shower enclosures, frameless shower enclosures, those type of things, those are all going to taper off and slow down. Even though we have some of that work lined up, it's not going to last for a long time if that, um, if this keeps up. Right. And, uh, but we, we will try and, and, and use our expertise in as many areas as we can. And our, our area of work for our service is fairly large. It goes all the way from Kindersley to Coles, Cold Lake for automatic sliding doors. Oh, wow. And overhead doors, we service basically from Kindersley to Vermilion. Um, and so we, a lot of time on the road, but there's, there's a lot of work out there that way for us. So. Right. Yeah. So this might be a great opportunity if you don't mind. So the overhead mm -hmm. doors, I know you talked about like, I need windows in the back of, I mean, there's so much stuff that you do for like, what, what, are, what's your main thing that you're doing right now? Mostly like, what's your. Well, uh, right now, I would say our, our main thing is, is doors. Uh, that's very general, but um, overhead doors probably make up about, I'd say 30% of our work. Mm -hmm. um, then, then there's our auto glass, which is quite actually a, a small percentage of our work, but we, I probably put that in the, in the 10 to 15% area. Yeah. Um, and then there's other glass, um, you know, sealed units and, and uh, flat glass repairs. That's another chunk of our work, probably another 10 to 15 percent there. So sorry, when have, you say flat glass, would that be my front window that I have yeah, to like, crack in? Yeah, yeah, replacing broken windows um, right. in, in commercial and residential uh, windows and doors. And uh, then um, our steel doors, we do a lot of industrial steel doors for, for shops and businesses. Um, even in the oil field, we do that and um, hardware for doors. I, I don't know what the percentage is necessarily, but right now, this time of year, it's actually quite high. We Through the winter, we do a lot of steel doors. Oh, yeah. So that part um, keeps us fairly busy right. um, through the colder months. And then and then we have our automatic doors, and uh, which is the sliding doors for um, store... Um, grocery stores, hotels, okay. stores, anything like that, where, where you've got automated entrances. That type of work, that, that's a growing part of our business. And, and this, it's mostly service is what it is. But when the call comes in, it's, a, it's the main entrance of a, of a business. It has to be done right away. So right. we have to be available. And, and that, that uh, it, it's good work. It's, it's, uh, they're good customers that we work for. And so we, we do appreciate that that type that part of our business, um, but it's it's continually growing. I don't know; it's probably in that twenty five to thirty five percent of our business right now. Awesome. Yeah. So, how many staff do you have, Barry? So that we have six employees, and then plus um, Michelle and I. So there's seven of us all together. Right. Yeah. Or pardon me, eight of us, I guess, with with the yeah. two of us. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, yeah. You know, and think like I just worry about businesses too, like all these employees that we have, right? You know what I mean? Like that makes up our town. Like it's yeah, it's, it does it's worry. Like it's and and that's why I um, I think I, I'm glad to see the federal government stepping up and at least trying to bring a plan into place for assisting small businesses mm -hmm. with that because 
I mean, from my perspective for our business, I really feel it would be devastating to lose the staff that we have because they're skilled. They're, they're, most of them are, are journeymen. Um, they've got a lot of experience. I, I wouldn't even know to start counting up the years of experience that, that is uh, in our business. Um, but I, I, just, I just feel it would be devastating for, for our business if we lost our staff. And so if it gets to the point where we need assistance, I'm glad that the, there is a plan out there. I don't know how it's going to be applied necessarily, but um, I'm just, it's a good option to have out there. So, yeah, I, I think so too. Like even ourselves, like, you know, like our, our team and I'm sure yourself too, like you have these people with you for so many years and they are your business. They like are. they can run my business better than I can run my business. And they have yeah. the same culture. They have the same beliefs. Like we're in sync, right. You know, and you can't replace that. You, you, you can't, I don't know. It's, it's a huge worry of mine. Yeah, sure. no, it is very much. Um, so we got through that one. And, oh, this kind of talks about the next question. Are you looking for relief from the government or your view on this? Yeah. So like at this time we aren't, um, we're, we're pretty stable as far as uh, business goes right now. Um, but it, we, we just don't know what the next few months are going to bring. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm, I'm glad to see that there is some support out there, but mostly glad at this point that it's there for those uh, companies that are, are, are really, really struggling and, and have been for more than two weeks, you know, yeah. um, there's, there's lots I don't even know about. And that would be there's just no, no customers coming through. I, I think of our, our local restaurants and, and, you know, the, the hamper it puts on, on their business to just be able to do takeout. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, I think it, it definitely be something I would look into if it came to the place where we're, we're down to uh, worried about keeping our staff or not. Um, but at this time it's definitely, we're still good to go. Yeah. We um, have a meeting with Shireen uh, from KBH and she's going to be touching on some of those benefits and stuff. Yeah. She's going to do a Zoom meeting with us. So hopefully yeah. like, like that's all great. It's out there, but how, how do you access it and how long does it take? Like there's so many more questions involved, right? Nobody that's really knows it. it now. Yeah. And it's, it takes a lot of reading and um, mm -hmm. make sure you have the proper information. Yeah. Okay. Any suggestions or insights you have to share with others, Barry? Well, um, I, I guess Michelle and I have, I've been through a, a family tragedy in five months ago. And so we, we've talked about this a lot, this COVID-19 coming up and, and um, you know, what, what the future can hold. And, and I think we just look back on, on what we went through and it was um, what we learned is that you have to accept the, the situation you're in, accept what you're faced with before you can move on. And, and I think this, this whole uh, crisis that we're, we're faced with now, it's a new normal for everybody yeah. and we don't know how long it's going to last. And so I, I, I mean, these are more Michelle's words than mine, but I really feel that um, we have to just accept before we, before you can advance and, and uh, progress, you could say in a situation like this, you just have to accept it. And I think um, there is going to be some positives come, up, come out, of, out of this, but it won't maybe be for everybody. Um, it's it's going to be how we, how we take, how we approach it that, right. that changes that outcome. So, right. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Okay, Barry. I'm not going to go on that one too much because it's too hard on me. <laughs> um, how can the community assist you in your business at this time, Barry? Well, I think that, um, I mean, we, as a, the social distancing part is very, um, it's kind of awkward, right? For small business, small community, um, small towns. And I think that for me, it was, it was difficult to grasp at first, but, um, biggest thing is just being respectful of, of everybody and, and that we all need to continue to do business in this new reality we're faced with and we need to just abide by those 
those laws that have been put in place and make the best of it. And I really don't know um, if there's any way other than that that we can assist one another. I mean, support one another in, in purchases as much as possible. But uh, really, there's not a lot of revenue to go around. And so it's going to be just the necessities that we're, that we're purchasing at this time and, and keeping things going. But to not get bogged down, uh, if, if possible, with um, just with, uh, with life in general, right? It's, uh, it's, it's a, whole, a whole new experience for everybody and nobody, nobody knows what's coming, really. Yeah. My, my son phoned me yesterday and he was ticked off because he's getting less and less hours and he was using the word I. And I says, Ashton, there's no I in the situation that we're going through. It's, it's a we situation. We're all in it. You know, yeah. there's, no, there's no I. There's no I. There's, it's a we. Like, it's everybody. Yeah. And it's not like I have a sister in Denmark and she's, they're faced with the same thing over there. Yeah. And, uh, and I really, it's a, there's no, there's no isolated area that's faced this. It's we're, we're all in it yeah. together. The whole, the whole world is, is faced with this right yeah. now. So I, I think, very, I think we're learning more compassion, you yeah, know, like, I, I you know, we're learning respect, you know, like I think we're, yeah, there's some things that's good, I think yeah yeah um before i la ask the last question barry i love the last question but can we talk about because it's quite uh, we talked about it before our meeting but can we talk a little bit about the 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 school division if that's okay sure. i don't really have any general questions we're just going to shoot from the hip here if that's okay sure. yeah um i know you're a trustee and you had said that your part is at huendon czar and provost yeah from Provost Huen and Amisk. So there's Amisk. Okay. there's there's this, uh, the public school in Provost and the uh, the the it's grade four to twelve in in Huendon and yeah. then K to three in Amisk and uh, and then we there's two two hundred eight colonies as well within my area and um, but I mean we all of us trustees work for all of the schools in the Buffalo Trail School Division we're uh, we're there for all of them. But those are the ones that are nearest to me here. So, right, and there's seven of you in total for all everywhere. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to share with everybody about your shout out to how well the teachers are doing right now, and and sorry. and, and the changes. Nine of us. Nine. <laughs> oh, sorry. Seven to nine. Well, yeah. that's still a lot of schools to look after for nine of you. <laughs> um, so, if it's okay, can you can you share with everybody like you're quite proud of all the teachers and and how everything has changed and how they've had to adapt? Can you just share a little bit of stories with us about what you have seen? Sure. Well, and I'm not on the ground floor um, of that part of it, but I I definitely uh, have seen an amazing um, amount of dedication from the teaching staff and educational assistants and and everybody, all the support staff. Um, it's I really just have to, to to give them a shout out and say thank you very much because they've they've made our job a lot easier as trustees mm -hmm. and uh, and I really feel that um, like I, I there's their number one priority is the students and that that's what's making it what it is and they as a, as a board we uh, our our number one priority is the students. And so to see the staff taking that initiative to to bring together online training or teaching and and there's just uh, just the, the ideas that come out of it. Um, I know that we've had the, the bus driver um, delivering packages for the kids. And, and I just think it's it's a it's a great idea to have everyone work together just to make it the best that we can and and give every student the opportunity to achieve um, in, in this situation. You know, I, I don't know, uh, there's, there was lots of questions like, and that still is, but just how can we even make this work when, when we don't, we can't have the kids in the school. Right. But I really must say, even just from my own family, um, seeing the kids being excited about school work at home, they, it's, it's really, really encouraging. Because I, I didn't, I just didn't know how it was going to go, you know. Right. Um, 
some of some kids really they just have that in them they want to they want to learn and and so they'll put the effort forth but um some of them don't but I, i'm seeing it in all of our kids there they've they've doesn't matter which one it is they all want to be a part of that 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 online learning so right. that's really encouraging and i hope that uh, that can continue yeah and uh it's it's really i think it's because of their relationship with their teachers that has made it so good so yeah and they've had to learn real quick right like this is all yeah. like literally overnight yeah they've had to yeah. adjust downshift upshift go sideways every direction just to figure this out yeah and we basically took a week to kind of put put some ideas together um the central services and the teaching staff they they took that, that week and it also gave a chance for the government to just to bring out um, what they had had in uh, their intentions were and and that way we could we could work off of those intentions and so that was uh, helpful and uh, give some time to, to kind of put the packages together and, and then continue on with learning after that so yes. it was a little bit of a break there for the for the students but but I think now they're back on track and and in a routine, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I think their their meetings are on a scheduled time, which is nice because every kid needs routine. So yeah, yeah it's good. Yeah. One thing we talked about before, Barry, and I know you don't know the answer, but maybe you can give resources, is uh is just like I feel that parents are stressed at home. They're at home and they're not used to being at home, they're stressed about financial. They have kids underneath their feet. They're trying to be a teacher. So their stress level is through the roof right now. And I think that they, we might see some family issues if there was already, you know, hard times in those four doors. Is there somewhere that these kids, like at least before they were able to go to school and escape, right? You know what I mean? That was their, they have their friends to talk to. They have their comfort of their teacher. They just have a, a safe surrounding. Like, is there anywhere if, if anybody is having issues, is how would, what would their best avenue be in the situation? Well, um, I just would encourage them to not be afraid to, to ask, whether it's a phone call or an email to their teacher. Um, there is still um, support and provision for that support uh, uh, in, within our division. And, and that's, that's one thing I really, um, I think all of us board members were really concerned about was the just making sure that there's still help for those who need it. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's maybe, it's not difficult to get access to it for them, but it's, it's a, a different avenue. And, and, it's, and it's maybe not the same personal um, interaction that we're gonna right. be seeing within the school, um, but we can definitely do that online just as we're doing now with, with Zoom or Google Meets. Mm -hmm. and, and it uh, it works really really well or is as well as it can, right. but I I mean my heart goes out to to the, the the ones that are having a hard time and it it it's just um, yeah I, I just want them to know that there is still there is still uh, help there for them and and they just need to ask right yeah. so there's a resource teacher in the school so it would be access so that access is still available. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, there's still uh, all of the teaching staff is still working, and um, and our MHPs, our mental health professionals, are, are, are to my understanding will still be working. Um, and then central services. There are some positions that will be after this last announcement on Monday. There will be some positions uh, cut back, especially in the educational assistant. Right. side of things that was one of their things uh, that I feel um, the EAs were doing a, an amazing job of of providing that extra learning opportunity for the the students that were were maybe struggling in certain areas um, but unfortunately they the government didn't see that they were re as, as necessary right. and uh, and that's disappointing but but I think they're they're um, there's going to be some some changes there. I just we haven't um, got the full picture yet, but it's coming, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll definitely be seeing some changes. Yeah, especially like those kids that are having troubles. They you know they're the ones that can't handle change either, That's right? Just it. Yeah, like it's a uh, holy doodles. Yeah. 
yeah. that's, that's a lot for them. Cool. I really appreciate you expressing your views on that, Barry. That's good. No problem. So our last question, Barry, is my favorite. Uh, what is the positive you see coming out of this? Well, I, I think that's going to go back to where, um, to that question about what like suggestions that I would have, um, because I, I really think that it'll be the positives will come out it, it, depending on how we uh, accept the the situation we're in, and really it's just like um, families can be torn apart or they can be brought together in a situation like this, and I really feel that there will be um, there will be a reliance uh, on the support that that the communities i mean we're we're in a small town a small mm -hmm. municipality that uh very close knit um in a lot in a lot of ways uh, especially with the business community and i really feel that we're we're going to see um support uh, we're going to support one another and and whether it's 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 maybe enough maybe not enough we're going to still appreciate more what others are doing um within our area right and i i don't know um if that is overlooked in every situation and like there's there's uh, being a part of the chamber i've i've grown to appreciate more and more the the opportunities in our area and I really feel like Provost and area have has a lot going for it. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like um, maybe we'll, we'll the, the general public will see more of that in the next few months, that, that there is opportunity here, um, but we have to be here for one another. Yeah. And that's, that is, uh, I don't know, sometimes in this global, world i mean it's 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 so um broad now yeah we we lose track of what's going on right around us right whereas now we're we're back to to staying at home there's nowhere to go um we i think we'll we'll turn our focus more to what's happening around us right yeah. more so and that'll be a positive um but i i really do feel that it's it's going to be the way we look at it that that makes it positive or really negative and I think for all of us, there's going to be some negative. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to be faced with some really challenging situations in the next few months. But, but that doesn't mean that it all has to be negative. That's right. Yeah, we can grow from it for sure. Yeah. And I, I liked your idea or your comment about the support. Um, we, we do have support around us, right? And like you yeah. said, you just went through a horrible situation. And that was key for you to get it through was. that support, right? Yeah, we uh, really would never wanted to have lived anywhere else uh, um, to go through a situation like that and an experience. Um, we are very, very grateful that we live here in, in Provost, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, Barry, I think if you have anything else you want to share with anybody or if you have any no, knowledge, insight, you're good? <laughs> no, I think that's that covers it. Uh, I think, did we talk about all your services? I know I fell in love with your shower doors, the custom shower doors. That's really genius. Do you have anything you can ex elaborate on that yeah. for me? So basically the, the shower doors part of it, we've we've done for quite a few years now, but it's, it's a part of our business that's grown, but um, mostly because those types of showers have become more and more popular, but it's a frameless type shower, heavy glass, between three eighths and half inch thick glass, and uh, and not no frame around it. Um, the the basis it's it's designed to be used in a tiled shower. So okay. we don't do the tiling, and but there is there is um, some contractors that do that that type of work here okay. in Provost and in our area, and so then we just provide the glass portion of it after they've got the tile set. We come in and measure it and kind of go through the oh, cut. One thing I made a comment to Barry, and I was dumbstruck. And I, seriously, maybe everybody knows this, but me, but I hate cleaning. I don't like anything domesticated. So these glass doors, I think they're beautiful. And I'm like, oh my God, I'd have to clean those. Like I'd have watermarks everywhere. But you said it doesn't do that. Well, there's there's two types. Well, two types of glass that we use. One is is a uncoated standard annealed glass, which is your your straightforward tempered glass that all shower most showers are made out of. But we also handle the uh, PPGs, um, 
it's a clairvista is what it's called. You can look it up online, but it's a coating on the glass and it's a permanent coating. It doesn't ever have to be reapplied, but it actually uh, beads up the water and runs off. And it, um, it, is, it works really, really well and shines in hard water situations where the, the water is quite hard wow. and stains quite easily. You will still get some staining, but to clean it off is so much easier. And uh, it, it just, it, it, we've had really good success with it. And especially in Provost with the harder water in town, it's, it's worked really well, so. Even when we moved to the acreage, I said to Leon, I never want another shower or glass shower. It's because I have to clean the damn thing. But then I hear what you say. It's like, hmm, maybe. Yeah. Um, and you said that it's permanent. Like, it's not like yeah. you have to reapply it in five nope. years. It is, cool. It's permanent, yeah. And you, it doesn't wear off either. It's, uh, it can be scratched just like glass can be scratched. It's a very hard coating. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, as far as wear and tear, it doesn't wear off at all. So, so if you have a weird spot, you can tile it and you just come in and customize these doors for it. Yeah, yeah. As long as uh, we have a place to anchor our brackets too, we, we're, we're good to go. So. so cool. Yeah. Okay, cool, Barry. I'm going to hit end record here and then you and I'll stay on and we'll chat. So Sounds bye, good. everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>